All right, everyone. A uh, special guest today, Ali Boone, an author, a seasoned turnkey uh, real estate investor. And today we're going to talk about a few things. Um, number one, the passive mindset. Number two, what's happening in her world and uh, just get to know her and her and her uh, her expertise. Ali, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm busy and very well. I've never heard seasoned turnkey investor. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> sounds so fancy. I'm well, like, do I want to be a seasoned? I'm like, oh, <laughs> every yeah, time I, I try know, and leave like, turnkey, oh, nope. I know, right? Um, <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, because I have way more experience with turnkeys than I ever wanted. <laughs> yeah, for good no, or for bad. You. I, 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 yeah, you're right. I prefer to have no experience and have it <laughs> be very passive, but that's not how it works. <laughs> yeah. So, passive. Um, yeah, I yeah, know, right? Great. So let's let's talk about what you've been up to as of late. Um, I know you have a new book out. So give us the spiel, you know, one to two minutes on all that stuff. Yeah, just a short. So I started in real estate investing, really. Uh, my very first investment attempt was not a turnkey, but that one failed so quickly that I got into turnkeys pretty fast early on. And that where I'm coming up on about a decade. Um, so I started as a turnkey investor myself, having no idea that I was going to end up in this world as much as I am. Um, that eventually led to me dropping out of my corporate job. I used to be an engineer. So for the past decade, um, I was buying turnkeys for myself, but also helping other people buy. It kind of was kind of an organic um, progression, I guess, if you want to call it that. And a few years ago, I started a book because, you know, one of the things that I'm most passionate about with investing, with life, with whatever is kind of the psychology of it and the mindset. And, you know, something I was seeing a lot with real estate investors, people trying to get started is kind of a hiccup in the mindset part of it. You know, there's so much information online. You Google how to be a real estate investor. You have all this stuff getting thrown out, thrown out at you. And, you know, real estate notoriously has a pretty big failure rate. And so yeah. as I was watching people, especially with turnkeys, one cool thing about them is it brings in a lot of brand new investors and rightfully so, but, you know, I was able to really start watching people and see where a lot of the challenges with people getting into real estate investing were. And that is what kind of led to me writing the book. It's called not your how to guide to real estate investing life lessons on hacking your mind before you hack your wallet. And it's, I call it kind of like the prerequisite to the how to guides because it's more mindset based spoiler alert. There is, one how to get in there. But, um, you know, when you Google how to be a real estate investor and everyone's like, you need to flip properties, you should wholesale. Okay, maybe. And it's not that the how to guides are wrong, but you know, there's so many options in this industry, like how can you take a step back and better set yourself up? So there's not as high of a failure rate. You know, people tend to just go flying off into the deep end without their floaties on. And oh, yeah. that's what causes a lot of turmoil in this industry. And, you know, people have one big loss right out of the gate and they're jaded forever. And I think it's such a great industry. I don't want to see so many people get hitched up in it. So that's really what led to writing the book. And that just came out in summer of 2020. Um, it's done really well. I, I love, um, you know, the most important thing for me is getting the messaging out. But uh, since then, I've even started doing more real estate coaching. I've kind of always done it over the years. But yeah, it's been a really cool progression for me. Um, you know, I really get to work, um, you know, obviously on the investments, but I like working with investors, whether that's one on one or writing a book or, you know, talking to people about this industry and just helping navigate. So yeah, that's, that's kind of a decade yeah, and a hundred you know. percent. I, um, you know, I've known this for about 12 years myself, so kind of the same amount of experience. And I, um, you know, I, today's market so so uh, so interesting in that you know there's the Bitcoin that exists, there's these GameStop trading mechanisms, there's all these crazy so gambles much going out there. on. <laughs> it's, it's nuts, and I think people are chasing these home runs, which yeah. is it's such a dangerous place to be. Yeah. And when you take it back to real estate, you know, I have a lot of investors that I work with too. They're always looking for the next big thing. It's like, well, yeah. If you're if you're making 10, 12, 15 percent on your money, what? Why are you trying to get twenty? Yeah. In, a in, a, in a category that you know probably nothing about. Yeah. You know, and it's, in some ways, real estate um, is forgiving uh, in, a, in, a, in a lot of ways. I mean, I've made mistakes yeah. in real estate and still came out at least break even. Yeah. And I, I do encourage investors to think about having a passive, boring portfolio. Make that oh, 12, 15% yeah. and just let it sit, you know, versus having to chase down Bitcoin trades and all this crazy stuff. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm seeing a dynamic in the market where a lot of investors do want to get into turnkeys. They do want to get into real estate, but they also want to dab their toes in a lot of different places. Yeah. And that's where I see mistakes happening is that they're trying to learn so many different pieces yep. of real estate versus just focusing on one thing that works. Yep. 
What, what yeah. do you see? God, I seriously cannot agree more. And it's been kind of one of the biggest things that I've been talking to people. You know, I, I said I've been doing a lot more coaching and stuff. And one of the biggest things that I see, and and I was one of the culprits of this when I was trying to figure out my way out of the corporate of, out of my corporate job. I didn't know how I was going to do that. I didn't know it was going to be real estate. And what I was doing was I was learning a little about a lot. And what I found figured out after a little while of doing that is I wasn't getting traction on anything. And I was like, okay, I got to stop learning a little about a lot. I need to pick something and niche it down because you've got to go deeper in the subject. And, and this is what I see happening with a lot of people today is again, go on the internet, how to be a real estate investor. And there's so much information, which on one hand is great, but because there's so much information, I, I see everyone doing exactly what you're describing as staying too wide versus going deep. And so if you, you know, let's say you're like a rental property investor or whatever, and it's like Bitcoin, Bitcoin, you know, like none of that's wrong necessarily, but when you're sporadic about things you've got to know more than surface level information and i think that's really what gets people in trouble is you know if you let's say you're a flipper great and you you've done really well at that you want to shift into i don't know shift into whatever syndications rental properties whatever it's you can do that certainly but you've got to give yourself time to learn a deeper level of information because if you stay on the surface about everything you're literally just like throwing money darts all over the place chances are with a blindfold on and that i think i mean exactly what you describe is it it's what gets so many people in trouble because you've got to know more like i can't tell you how many people come to me and they're like hey do you think this would be a good investment i'm like do you (laughs) <laughs> and they're like, uh, I mean, I think so. Okay. Hi. Yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> like, yep. uh, any idea where you plan to pride, you know, like, and this is so much what I talk about in the book. It does not take a lot of knowledge. We're not talking about like go to school for two years to learn a particular strategy or learn how to get a rental property or learn how to do Bitcoin. It takes, it's not a lot of information. It wouldn't even take very long, but you've got to get it. You know, Bitcoin's a little bit of a separate thing, but like real estate, like there's just some very basic things. If you check these boxes, you're probably ready to try something, but people don't even get to those boxes. So yeah, I, oh gosh, I could not agree more. That in the, in the trend setting, you know, it's five years, five years ago, it was everyone wanted to be in the West coast investing in, you know, Oakland and San Francisco or, you know, some hot Seattle market, um, which that that was way too late. And now everyone (laughs) wants to be in Austin, Texas. And it's like, you're five years too late. Yep. And it's with turnkeys. Everyone's like, I want to invest in Atlanta. I'm like, you're eight years too late. Yeah, you're right. Exactly. (laughs) So it's like, you, you have to, (laughs) to your point, um, in, if you're only at the surface level, you're only going to see yeah. the trends and follow the trends. And by that time, everyone is already there buying yeah. the best deals. Um, so I, you know, I think what you make as a point is a really good one is pick a niche, spend yeah. two years, three years learning it. Yep. Um, and, and once you master it, go on to something that yep. kind of deviates a little bit, right? So Absolutely. for example, if you start in flips, great. Now you have the skill set to understand what it takes to, you know, build uh, walls, two by fours, plumbing, all that mm-hmm. stuff. Maybe now it's time to go into the burr method where you can do yep. some wholesaling, pick up a property, do a burr, you know what it takes to do the contracting, then you're all good, right? Yep. But you wouldn't do a turnkey buy and just dive right into a commercial building flip, no. right? No. So, oh, and you know, so many people try. They, they even try and skip the turnkey part. They're like, I found this 18 unit apartment complex that oh, needs yeah. work. And I'm like, have you ever invested in anything? And they're like, no, it'll be my first one. Yeah, <laughs> that's a... Yeah, that's a wave of uh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. oh. <laughs> yeah, and you know what's 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 fascinating too is um I, I don't know about I don't know about more than any industry, but for sure real estate. I don't know how to say it. It's there's a lot of scumbags out there. Oh. You know, and I could list a bunch right now. Some that have had massive class action lawsuits and everything else. Yep. And uh, I'm sure you you think I, like I think you're thinking the same ones that I am. <laughs> and uh, they're they're good at their trade of selling. And mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of bad deals go down where it's like you know if you just spend another six months learning, even three months doing the basic due diligence, you yeah. probably wouldn't be in the situation. Yeah. And, you know, to make all of that more complicated, you know, and that's why I say like real estate investing is a hard industry to navigate. You don't know who the scumbags are. You don't know what you don't know. None of us learned this in school. Like I get it. We're it's, it's a difficult industry to navigate. And on top of all of those things, you know, I, I see so many people relying on the person and I'm like, or you could learn how to do due diligence on the property. You know, those scumbags 
yeah. ultimately don't even matter because if there's a property in front of you, if you learn how to analyze that property and you know what you're looking for, you know the risk, like the person doesn't matter, but yep. people don't even get that far in order because then the scumbags won't matter. It'd be kind of a great That's solution. Right. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. No, so if you have if you yeah. have things in place that are systematic uh, to verify or check or do the mm -hmm. analysis on a property, it kind of solves for itself, right? So yep. if you understand how to pick a market, you know the key the, the key variables there. If you know how to do an inspection report uh, and judge a property by the viability of the other property in a certain neighborhood by the tenant class and all those basic things, you could probably weed out the the appropriate value of that property. Yeah. Right. So right there is. It, you know, is a big piece of it. And then just yeah. knowing that you're not buying a property with a bad foundation or yeah. a roof that has holes in it or, you know, things that are yeah. pretty obvious. Um, so I, I think you're spot on. Yeah. So let me, let me ask you, so what do you, you, you obviously have a lot of, you know, clients are, that, that come to you and, and you're obviously following the trends in the market in the last say two months, what are people <laughs> coming to you most with, whether it be questions or ideas, what are you seeing most? Um, I would say I have two answers because, you know, I, I work with property sales on one end of it and then I do the coaching on the other end. As far as like people wanting to buy properties, I mean, as you probably know as good as I do, inventory is at an all time low. I mean, I heard a statistic, was it yesterday, that not only are there more people looking to buy houses than there are houses available, there's actually more licensed real estate agents in the U.S. than there currently are available houses. And I was like, Wow. wow. <laughs> that put a whole new perspective. Like it's where inventory is terrible right now. So what I'm seeing on that end uh, is number one, people looking for properties, but number two, it's bringing up this conversation about, it's, cause I work with rental properties. I can't speak for flips or, you know, that whole industry, but for rental properties, you know, rental properties make money in five different ways. I won't dive into the um, nuts and bolts, but, you know, cash flow appreciation, tax benefits, um, equity build and hedging against inflation. And what the current inventory shortage is causing is the properties I work with, with turnkeys, they're always been known for cash flow. And cash flow is getting lower because not only are prices high, inventory is low, but now the interest rates are going up also. And so what I'm seeing is people being forced to get introduced to understanding the more overall value of you know the returns of a rental property because you almost have to understand those at this point because when cash flow looks minimal because we're down to like new construction lower cap rates you know interest rates now so lower cash on cash um so it, it's forcing people to kind of look into that and the complication with that when people are looking for properties i i have so many people coming to me they're like i would like an eighty thousand dollar property with a 12 percent cash on cash return and i'm like have have you I looked will. in the market lately? Like, um, I'm sorry, was that the U.S.? You were? <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm seeing a lot of confusion on the buying end of it, you know, just aside from logistics, also construction delays. I mean, COVID just really messed with every single thing. So there's a whole bunch of confusion on the logistics side of buying properties, but also kind of right. the mindset of, you know, how do you determine that this really is a good property? On more of the coaching side, kind of like I mentioned earlier, I would say, 90% of the people that come to me are either new or newer and they're trying to get their footing. They're trying to get some traction. And there's just, I I'm looking over here cause I have a computer screen over here. It's like the internet's like, hello, <laughs> you know, yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. there's so much information. And that is what I'm seeing across the board is people are just, there's too much information. I mean, I guess it's a great problem to have, but then you hear all of these things and you don't, you don't know which way to turn. You don't know which way to like, yeah. okay. Uh, uh, conflicting opinions, you know, like, well, so I'm, yeah, just I'm, a whole bunch of confusion across the board right now. hundred percent. And so I'll, I'll hit on, on the last point just quickly. So um, part of it is that in things like YouTube, right. Get, mm -hmm. It's a clickbait market. So yep. fear is a big problem. Yep. What I mean is you see a lot of these market crash headlines to get clickbait. Yep. And I, for, I don't know, 18 months I've been hearing this. I've been saying, I don't foresee a crash. If anything, with these higher interest yep. rates, we might plateau back to yep. a normal, normalized 2% appreciation. Mm -hmm. And um, it, so that's happening. So the, you get a yep. lot of fear mongering with a lot of people who yep. don't know what the hell they're talking about. And then on the other side, you're right. I, this is where I have had problems um, for some time setting realistic expectations on yeah. the returns, right? And yeah. so while we, we won't get into the details of it, 
your, your mention of the five ways to make money in real estate is really important because when you do factor it all in together, you're making 18 to 25% return on your money yeah. annually, yeah. right? And it's, that's a really good return. And it's less volatile than the stock market, which makes it a safer investment. And mm -hmm. you're probably beating the market. Yep. Now, just on the cash flow standpoint, which is where I think where people focus most on, that has compressed substantially. Back in yep. 2015, when I was getting people in, into turnkey deals, I had to sell the concept of it. Like I, I couldn't yeah. get people to buy them, right? And fast forward to 2017, 18, I can't find enough inventory to even sell. Yeah, you know, Same. but but back then it was 16, 80 percent returns on on cash yep. on cash. So Today funny you're saying this. I'm like, oh my god, you're in my head. Like it's the exact those thing time right? frames are exactly what I'm like. Exactly. I had the I I had the inventory then and not the buyers. Now I have the buyers, and not the inventory. And I'm yeah, like, what just happened? And there's not even as much cash flow now. Right. So, no, so back in those days, though. Um, <laughs> If you had been buying turnkeys back in 2015, 2016, those properties are probably making 30% plus ROI annually, which are if just, not, if not more, you know, honestly, exactly. with the appreciation like it's been lately. Oh man. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, crazy. Right. So going forward, I think it, if you can find a cap rate or a cash on cash ROI of five to 7% and you have enough cushion for the, for the maintenance and it's in a good market, you're probably buying an okay deal. Um, yeah. You know, and another thing I've, I heard too, I'd be curious to get your thoughts on this. I heard this from some very seasoned fellow uh, he was doing it for like 40 years in real estate. He said, it's, it's foolish to think that you would ever get a home run deal, right? Because mm -hmm. who would ever give up a home run deal? The first yeah. person that sees it is going to take it and keep it. So the best you can expect is a good deal. Uh, you're never going to get a, usually, unless you're in the, yeah. the grind of it, the wholesaling of it, you probably won't get a home run deal. So expect a good deal, right? Yeah. I mean, at that point, it kind of depends on what your definition of home run oh, is, that's true. you know, yeah. it's kind of, you know, that's such a variable. Um, I can, I can see his point, but I also don't want to downplay how great the returns can be. So I yeah. easily got some uh, home run deals. My very first turnkeys were in 2011, 2012, which if you remember back then, everything was on sale. I mean, yeah. people now would be like, so what numbers do you see on your turnkeys? I'm like, you don't want to know, <laughs> like, <laughs> but true. just leave those alone. I, you yeah. know, no, no need to rub that in. Like, and I would consider those home run deals, but it, they haven't been perfect. You know, I've had stress over them. Sometimes I've had extended vacancies. Sometimes I've had drama. I've had to fire property managers. So it really depends on what your definition of a home run deal is. And like you mentioned earlier, setting expectations accordingly. If you own real property, you can have the best of the setups and there's still going to be things that may happen. So, you know, it, it totally depends on what the definition of home, because if I were to really call something a home run, that means I'm a hundred percent hands off and life is easy breezy, yeah, that's like true. Pff, no problem. But if you look at the numbers of my properties, those are easily home run numbers, no question. So, yep. you know, but I, I think more importantly than what it's labeled as or what the expectation is, is, you know, to his point is, it, you're not looking for the grand slam necessarily. Like you said earlier, like people are chasing the next shiny object or the next big thing or Bitcoin or, you know, whatever. And, you know, I, I, there's that picture online. I don't know if it's a meme or whatever, but there's two ladders and one of them has like normal increments oh, yeah. of ladder steps. And then the one guy's like trying to reach for the first step. And it's the whole point is like baby steps. Yeah. And I think that is such an important concept in real estate circling back to exactly what you're saying earlier is if you're constantly aiming for that big thing, number one, it's going to be harder to get there. And number two, you can also fall off of that pretty, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to be a longer fall where if you just build baby step by baby step, and I realize that's the more boring, not as exciting way to do it. But in something like real estate, like rental properties are a long-term investment. And now that I've had, you know, them for at least 10 years plus now, I see where the profit really is. And yes, the cash flow has been great, but yep. they have profited in so many other ways that I, you know, I always heard about the five profit centers of rental property, but I didn't totally, I'm like, it didn't really seep in until now I've experienced it. I'm like, oh my God, like these are yep. huge. But again, you know, if you, I, I, you know, people in 2020 with 10 months of vacancy because of the eviction moratoriums, everyone's like, oh my God, I lost $10,000 in a year. And I'm like, oh, hang on. I realize how frustrating that can be, but like, you've got to look at this from a long-term oh, perspective. Yeah. So it's like those little steps versus constantly trying to reach for the really tall ladder rung. Yeah, no, I think you're spot on too. Um, and again, I, I think, um, I don't know if it's like a millennial thing, but I, I do see there's a lot of curiosity of unique or, or alternative investments, whether it be yeah. cannabis or solar panels or 
you name it, it's something new. And it's like, well, how much, how much do you really know about that? Like, yeah. like you know, like again, real estate's not, it's, it can be complex depending on what you're doing, mm-hmm. but it's not actually that complex. If you spend a little bit it doesn't of time, have to be right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really only fun. complex. Cause we didn't learn about it in school. Like, cause we have right. no idea what we don't know, but once you really start, yeah. Once you start diving in, it, it gets more simple. And one thing I was going to say earlier, I just thought of again is, you know, the other thing to make all of this more complicated, we're, when you're talking about the scumbags, like the other thing is even the non scumbags, one thing that I've noticed in real estate is none of our journeys are exactly like another person's. My journey has been different than yours. Who's been different than that? Like, you know, so people go to like the guru seminars or whatever, and they're wanting someone to map out their journey. And it's like, that is one thing about this industry is you have to be willing to create your own journey. Like you can get all of the basic information, but what you do with that and how you really execute your real estate empire or whatever you're trying to accomplish, it's going to be probably a little bit different than the next guys because everyone's situations are different. Everyone's means are different. Everyone's resources are different. And, you know, that, that is a big part of it too, is, you know, you have to be able to take some initiative. Um, And that's what also further encourages this like baby steps kind of thing, because when you have to figure so much out about an industry on your own, how exactly are you going to reach that really tall ladder rung? You know, so that's a great point. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's not so much, well, it is, I mean, it could be resources, it could be time, um, but you're right. Everyone's journey is different. In fact, I have, I have clients. Skill sets, that, everything. Skill sets. Um, I have clients that started in one idea, completely sold all their properties, went to Burrs, so got rid of all those. And we're like, you know what? I'm just going to be a hard money lender. You know? <laughs> so I, I want the most passive I, form. I can relate. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm like, you know I what? I get enough. it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but on that topic, I, it is really important to, to, to talk about um, time to return. Right. And yeah. I have a, I have a friend, he's one of my, my business partners. Love the guy. He's a, he's a creative guy. He's very innovative. Um, he has a hard time streamlining and scaling up and he likes to dabble on a lot of things. And, yeah. and I said, look, if you just put all the energy into one thing, you're going to produce exponentially larger amounts of returns yep. than these small piecemeals. Yep. So what, what is your philosophy on time versus the return that you get? Oh man, this could be a whole episode in itself. So one of the chapters I put in the book actually is called the three true currencies. And I've had this kind of idea or philosophy for a few years now that there's actually three true currencies that we're working with in any given situation. So money, obviously we all know about, but the other two are time and sanity. And, you know, what, so like turnkey rental properties, for example, they're not the highest returns of all the options, but in order for me to keep my sanity and my time, but I honestly value sanity even more than time, to me, it's not worth going the, um, the effort levels, the skill levels, the, I'm not, I, I can deal with contractors. I don't like it. Like if I, at some point flip a property kind of as like a side thing or whatever for fun, you know, get some experience, whatever, cool. But in terms of like a career or like my thing, my niche, I want to pick turnkeys, like, please. <laughs> like they're, they're a bit, they're, they're much slower build. They're, you know, the returns aren't as high, like I said, but when I look at those three true currencies for myself, money is the lowest ranking because not to come up with the nerdy cliche of YOLO, but you live, you only live once. Yeah. And so like, if I spend all of my time and sanity on something chasing these massive returns, what am I actually getting out of that? And I tell the story all the time. I was, I remember waking up one day when I was 13 and I was like, I want to make a gazillion dollars. And it wasn't for pretentious reasons. It was for like, I love a good problem solve. I'm like, I'm going to figure this out. This will be, it'll be a fun personal challenge. And over the years, you know, once I got into my corporate job, I started learning this big time. Once I became an entrepreneur, I suddenly started revamping what was more important in my life because now suddenly I would rather not be a gajillionaire if it means my time and sanity, if I get to sleep in, if I get to go to the beach, travel when I want to, all of those things. So it becomes this trade-off because in real estate investing and really anything you're doing in life, if you want to hire a housekeeper, you are trading either time or money. Like you're either going to clean your house yourself and trade your time, maybe sanity, depending on how much you like cleaning your house or pay money for it. So in any given give or take, those three currencies are in play somehow. Yep. Um, so as far as real estate investing, you know, yeah, again, those big rungs on the ladder, like you can chase the big thing for the big returns. But if 
I flipping is always just my go-to example. It's easy to say, but you know, well, here's a better example. Actually, I have people who have a full-time job and a family of five and they're like, I'm thinking about wholesaling. And I'm like, <laughs> when, <laughs> like, I, when would you do that? Like, that's the most active, I don't even want to call it a strategy because it's not even an investment strategy, but it's a great job, but it's another job. And so somebody who has a full-time job and a family of five time might be their most you know, oh, yeah. valued commodity. Um, for me, it's sanity. I, I, I don't think anything's worth not sleeping well at night or having a headache about. Yeah, um, it, so yeah, I think it, oh, it's such a big conversation. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's interesting too. Um, you know, I don't know how this will sound, but I'll, I'll just say, but I, you know, I, some of my higher net worth clients that are doing very well or have them very well, and they, they worked their tail off to get there. Yep. It's funny because they, they definitely now value time way more than anything else. Like, it, it's funny how most people get to that. Back Most to people that. get yeah. off the money thing. <laughs> yeah. Like spoiler once you, alert. Once you have enough money, <laughs> yeah, you're like, wait a minute, do I need an extra how, you know, whatever it is mm-hmm. to buy whatever. Um, and you know, so I, I find them actually looking for the safest, most passive, yep. timeless investment versus, Oh, how can I make that next big, huge rung? Like you're saying. So they're not yeah. doing massive flips. They're not buying hotels or buying big buildings. They're usually just lenders um, yep. or they, they, whatever else is very passive syndication. Yep those sort of things. And so it's interesting um, because it, for those who have made it, it seems like time is most important. And those yep. who have maybe not made it monetarily, who do appreciate time up front, I, I would say you're probably way ahead of the, the curve in terms of wisdom. Yeah. Well, and if you think about it too, like I, the example of financial freedom, everyone wants financial freedom. Well, one could argue, really, what is financial freedom? Yep. Most people, it's kind of time freedom and what it because when people are like i want financial freedom i'm like what is it that you actually want they're like financial freedom i'm like what does that get you because financial freedom is i hate to tell everyone that's not what we actually want because we want what financial freedom gets us what does it get us time what does that look like in a real life application well it looks like retirement because what happens if you're 65 years old and you retire you have all the time in the world. You can go tour the country in an RV. You can go travel. You can go hang out with your grandkids. You get to do all of these things that you couldn't do before. So why do we have to wait until we're 65? If you can bring that, you know, earlier on, you know, I, when I quit my corporate job and I started my business, I was, I think I was just turning 30. I, but I remember telling people, I was like, I'm pretty sure I just retired at 30. Now, granted, I've probably worked a million times harder in the last however many years since I was 30 yeah. as an entrepreneur, but it. it's, it's on my schedule. It's on yeah. my time. I, I get to sleep in, I get to travel when I want, I just take my laptop and work. And so it's like, how can we bring this idea of retirement, you know, into the more present and not wait till we're 65. And that is that conversation of, if you get to financial freedom, what are you actually taking advantage of? So if it's time freedom, how can you give yourself time freedom, even potentially before you have financial freedom? I got time freedom way before I got financial freedom. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, I'm retired because yeah. people are like, oh, you're retired. You have all the money. I'm like, no, they have the time. That's yep. huge, huge trade off. Yep. Totally agree with that. Yeah. That's a great concept. Um, that's good stuff. So I think I'm going to end there. That's a, that's a fantastic way to end kind of on the passive mindset um, topic. So where can people find you? Um, and one more time about your new book. So now that I've, uh, you know, given all the teasers for the book. So I actually set up a link for all of your listeners to get a free copy of the book. Oh, wow. Um, if you go to, let me make sure I'm going to say this link, right. Um, so my comp, Oh, you, are you going to link to it? Yeah, we'll, we'll, um, we'll put it in the description of the YouTube video and, Perfect. and you just click there and get your free book. Yep. And then, um, what are some, what are some markets that you're, you're in for the turnkeys? Oh, those are tough right now. Um, honestly, it's shifting so much to new construction because we're, we're running out. The only market we have, well, that's not totally true right now. We've had Kansas city has been, um, the, a little bit consistent as far as inventory. Um, it's not where I'm really pointing people to necessarily. Um, the deals are fine. I don't think they're anything yep. super extravagant. Um, we're about to get Cleveland back. We lost Cleveland for a while. Ohio has been one of the hardest hit um, with the foreclosure moratoriums. Um, new construction wise, Jacksonville is a big one right now. And we're actually opening up some more Florida markets right now. Ironically, like you, you don't mm-hmm. really put Florida in the cash flow uh, department. And 
some of those will be uh there's a couple regular turnkey options coming there but it's gonna be like build to rent new construction oh, yeah. um, stuff like that but really i mean turnkey world is shifting to new construction for good yep. or for bad right now yep. yep i see the same thing awesome yeah. um, and i wonder who you're using in florida i might know the same team um but yeah let's let's definitely stay in touch and for everyone again they, yeah. there will be a link below uh to her turnkeys as well as her free book yeah Ellie, thank you Awesome. Thanks so much.